Okay, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. We are gonna go and play some uh, a new version of Tron that I'm pretty excited to try out. I actually played about three leagues with it yesterday and went 4-1 twice and then 3-2 once. Um, so it's pretty sweet so far. And I'll explain what my thought process was between the two versions and what we're gonna be doing. Um, so the land base itself is pretty close to what we had before. The one change here is that we swapped out that Urza's factory for a blast zone. So this is the new card that I think is pretty amazing. I just actually ordered myself a place out of these because um, I think it's going to be pretty useful for a lot of decks that I seem to play. Um, so what the land does is it comes into play with a charge counter and it taps for colorless mana. And if you pay XX, you can add X charge counters onto it. And then for three mana, you can tap it and sacrifice it and you destroy each non-land permanent equal to the number of charge counters on it. So it's a really useful tool for when we get locked out under like a damping sphere, a... Um, Stony Silence, and it's something that we can use, we can you know, fetch up with like Ancient Stirrings, a Sylvan Scrying, already have it in play, we can blow those up. I've actually found that it's actually useful against aggressive decks too. I used it against, um, I used it against Black Green Rock and blew up all their two drops. I blew up a bunch of one drops against the Mono Red Burn. Um, I took out a bunch of creatures against humans, took out a bunch of their two drops. So that was really awesome. So that's the first new addition we have here. Um, the rest, the lands is the same. Um, the spells you see here, that's all the same. Okay. Um, what changed from our other versions here? Um, so you'll see two Ulamogs, two Ballistas, two Ugans, four Karns. But you do see just three warm coils right that's a bit of a difference we, we've been running the four for a while but then i have four karn the great creators now and if anyone's not familiar with this card it's um the new four drop karn um i wasn't sold on this card yet um my teammate no was actually pretty excited about this card uh, because he says the ability the minus two you'll get yourself a michael synth lattice and you lock them out of the game hey all this thanks for joining man um, so this card, four drop, uh, four drop, five loyalties, activated abilities of artifacts your opponent controls can't be activated. That alone is already pretty huge, right? That, that can lock some um, players just out of the game right there, um, as I found out. The plus one turns up to one target non-creature artifact into an artifact creature with the power and toughness equal to its CMC. And then the minus two lets you get an artifact card you own from outside the game or in exile, reveal it and put it in your hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so because of that's what we did for the main um, we have now, what we did for in order to make this work was we shaved a worm coil engine and we shaved the three relics that were in the main in order to fit the, the, the four Karns in. Okay, now if we go over to the sideboard, we got two Nature's Claim, two Thrag Tusk, two Warping Whales, but then we got a slew of artifacts here. This is what I landed on uh, after playing around with it a little bit. Uh, I'm actually not sold in this version. I'll actually talk about that with my version uh, uh, 1.1 that we're actually going to go to after this. We're going to run a league with this first and swap over. So we got one Graft Digger's Cage, two, uh, one Sorcerer's Spyglass. One Crucible, one Ensnaring Bridge, one Trinosphere, one Microsynth Lattice, one Worm Coil, and two Chalices. We can fetch any of this up. Very, very useful with the new Karn here. The big thing, though, is if we can fetch up this Microsynth Lattice, it turns all permanents into artifacts, into addition to their other types. So because Karn doesn't let them tack, uh, activate their abilities um all those lands can't tap for mana all those uh, effects are going like it's they're all just locked down thank you so much for the follow man I'm much appreciated hope you uh, enjoy the content we do have all of our videos um uh, online i do post that as much as i can as fast as about and we do stream uh twice a week so we can fetch all this stuff up and then we can drop it. So if you have 10 mana, you can drop card, fetch up Michael Synth Lattice, drop that down. They're locked out of the game. They're done. I've, I've locked so many opponents out of the game yesterday that it was just like the best time ever. So let's go into a league. Let's play this. And then I'll talk about the uh, changes uh, after this league with the... Uh, with what I where my thought is and then after playing it a little bit and then how I landed on that and then what we uh, are going to keep doing for playtesting for moving forward so pretty excited overall for this deck honestly it's uh enjoying myself quite a bit and uh I gotta say it is a very very enjoyable experience to just cast that Michael Synthlatus and lock your opponent just out of the game they're done they can't do anything else Oh. 
And let me know what your guys' thoughts are on this as well. I would love to uh, hear feedback and see how we should approach things. We still get to do, obviously, the normal Tron stuff, but we get to do some oppressive things as well. This hand's missing. We would really appreciate having like a chromatic star or sphere or a map here so we can finish Tron. But this does meet my normal criteria of having two Tron pieces that we can draw into the last one. So I'm going to keep this. Karn's Bastion. Ooh. No issue. We just draw it off the top of the deck. We are a true Tron player. We knew it. We needed it. We got it. Hanger back. That's just fine. Let's go ahead and crack this for a green. Drop this tower and let's scry up our power plant. And we'll pass it over to our opponent. Turn three Tron. Easy peasy. That's what we do. Max Opal, sure. Ballista, okay. And a Ravager. All right. Okay, drawing that green man is actually pretty good for us. So we have a couple options here. We can drop the car and just try to exile something. Um, most likely have to go after that ballista, I would think. Alternatively, we can just drop the ballista. We can start shooting things, drop the sphere. And then the other option, of course, is just running out the O stone. I don't really like the O stone play. Um, it requires us to just kind of put ourselves on the table and make ourselves quite exposed. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards the ballista line here. It allows us to put it out as a three. And then we can kind of react to our opponent based off what they're doing. Um, we would probably start off just shooting an arc bomb. They can sh sacrifice their mocks. We shoot it again. They sacrifice hanger back. We shoot it again. They'd have to sacrifice their ballista. And then they'd be left with a 3-3 three, three arc bomb and a 1-1. One, one. I kind of like that. Because we don't really want to pass it. If we pass it, they get to activate this Pendle Haven. That makes things a little bit more awkward. So let's shoot this for one, see how they respond. And we're definitely in a position where if we draw the other Karn, we're just going to go crazy here because it locks them out of the game pretty hard. All right, so they're sacrificing for that counter. We expected that. So let's shoot this. I expect him to sacrifice the hanger back here. Oh yeah, sac no, because we're gonna respond to that trigger. Mm -hmm. They won't be able to sack the token. We're gonna we're gonna respond to the trigger of them adding it and then shoot the uh, the the arc bound again. And thanks for joining Godrys, one of our wonderful subscribers. Yeah, they sacked the uh, the ballista there. Okay, so if we shoot the hanger back here, adds the counter, adds the rest, and they can add it on. Or we shoot the arc bomb, they sack that, and they just get a 1-1. One, one. I think I'd rather deal with a large Ravager than dealing with a large hanger back and leaving them with all those tokens.
Thanks so much, Bossom, for the subscription. Adding you to the new pool of awesome people. Reese is right. I really gotta. I really gotta come up with something for us to say once uh, someone uh, subscribes or someone follows. Okay, a welding jar and a throne of Geth. Ballista's not bad. We got a worm coil. It's ancient stirring. So we should be able to at least hit a land. So we're going to drop that Karn. Ooh, we can hit Karn the Great. So I don't. As much as I want to grab Karn the, the Great Creator right now, I feel like we can't because if we grab it, we're going to cast it and then it's just going to die in the swing. So I think we're best off just grabbing the tower here. This sets us up to cast uh, Ulamog next turn. Yes, I am playing the new Blast Land. We're just gonna drop Karn here. We're gonna exile it, targeting that Arcbound. They can sack it and throw it on the Flyer. That's fine. And then next turn, we're just gonna drop Ulamog and wipe off anything that's relevant. And I don't even want to cast a Ballista here because it's, it's a 5-5. They might kill our Karn, I would expect, but if they don't, then we just get to hit their Flyer, so. Yeah, I've been very impressed with that new Blast Zone land. Um, I really want to try a new version out of uh, Eldrazi Tron where we get to play a bunch of those, and then also a version of Colorless Eldrazi where we play a bunch of those, so. being taken out we suspected that uh, we're just gonna drop our they could proliferate our card no it doesn't do anything but i'd appreciate an opponent all right they got a seven seven they're sacrificing more artifacts that's fine for us we're about to just wipe their board pretty well so let's go ulamog exile that and exile that and that's match Awesome. Alrighty. So, we want to bring in the Nature's Claims and the Warping Whales. A lot of the stuff that we would normally bring in for the artifacts, we're just going to leave it in the side because we can fetch that up. So, we're just going to leave it right there. And I'm going to take out the Ugans and I'm going to take out the Ulamogs. Mm, actually, let's leave in the Ulamogs. Let's take out the Worm Coils. Let's run it like this. Yeah, that blast is on land. Uh, I've gotten to do some pretty fun interactions with it so far. Held off opponents from it, kept me alive. Um, there was a game where I was able to bring it back too because I had Crucible, so I uh, just fetched it up that way and uh, made our opponent. Uh, we put them in a pretty bad position. Uh, this hand has good stuff, but it's just not quite where we need it for it to be. It's not going to assemble Tron really well. It's. Uh, we can interact with them, but if we want to interact with them, we can't cast our stirrings. That ballista is not going to get large. O stone's not really castable, so we're going to ship this. Okay, this hand, once again, it fills the criteria of having two Tron lands, so let's keep this. We're going to ship away an ancient stirrings, and then we'll keep the two Tron lands and see if we can uh, see if we can find ourselves a chromatic again. Nope, not that lucky this time. Let's we'll see if we can find out the next one. Uh, 
Okay. Well, we're gonna have to run out this ballista. We gotta take care of that. Uh, gotta take care of that steel over here. We don't want that getting out of control. back is fine. We'd love to get a green source right now. Nope, no green source. Let's pass it back. We don't have very many turns at this rate. So we gotta hit it pretty soon here. I can add another. I think we're just gonna proliferate. It's pretty sweet for them. Proliferate up their board, make everything a two-two, and beat me up. Go down to twelve. Looking painful. All right, there's the green source. Can we afford the stirrings here? We can't, right? Because if they proliferate again, that's going to be 9 damage and they shoot us with the ballistas. So we actually can't afford to do it. So we got the, a land, so that's not bad, but we do have to shoot this ballista. And we're still on a pretty small clock here. Because we're going to play this land. They're going to proliferate again. Hit us for six. We're down to four. We have to, we have to rip the other Tron piece right now. In order to cast this O-Stone and hold it up. That, uh, that proliferate lands didn't work. Mm. Mm, that's a ballista for three. So they can hit us for four. Down to six. Definitely need to rip it. Nope, that's not good enough. Let's uh, let's go ahead and concede here. All right, let's run this back. So yeah, I, I hate keeping those hands, but I think the math says I'm supposed to keep those hands because there's a lot of like, you know, we have four chromatics, uh, spheres, four chromatic stars, four maps. Uh, just hitting a regular force. There's four of those. So there's just a lot, like 16 cards that we could hit that are just like, hey, we got this. We're going to form Tron. But it feels bad when you don't. I'd love to get Karn out against this deck and shut them out. All right, this vert, this hand's gonna form Tron really on turn four, but we're also gonna be able to dig for a threat. I think that's good enough for us to keep, so. We're so good at this. Maybe not so much last game, but this game. This game we're on point. Let's 
form tran. We don't have anything to do with it immediately, so we might be just ancient stirring this next turn. No, we can't form tron to still do it, which is good. It's either that or we just go fetch up a tower and then we can just cast Ulamog next turn, which seems pretty sweet, so let's do that. And we can hold up a Warping Whale. I don't think Warping Whale is going to be very useful against them though, because they already got Hardened Scales in play. Hey Epoch, thanks for joining man. Just gonna hold up to add a counter. Reasonable. Oh, there's Karn. If our opponent's not gonna concede after this Ulamon, they're definitely gonna concede once we drop that Karn. I have like six one ones, seven one ones. Oh, they're gonna make one of them large. Okay. They can't kill us, right? Well, hopefully they don't kill us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, that's like a two-turn clock. All right, so if it comes back to our turn for sure, we can Karn and Exile, blow it up because it's uh, the CMC is zero, so it should just die. Oh wait, no, no, it won't die because it's got the plus one plus one counters on it. So we're gonna want to fetch up our Ensnaring Bridge to prevent that creature from ever attacking after we attack. Okay. They can. Can they 18 us right now? Is that what I'm seeing? Sack the hanger back, goes to four, sacks the other two. Oh, wait! Is that 19? Are we gonna be at one? Okay, sweet. So they opted to uh, deal less damage but split it over two creatures. So then they still have potential lethal in their eyes next turn. But they don't know. We're going to drop this Karn. Minus the Karn. All right, so they can no longer do Arc Bound's ability, which is good for us. And they can't do Ballista either, right? So as long as we grab this Ensnaring Bridge, that should lock them out pretty well. And then let's... Let's run out the Power Plant. Run out the Sphere. Get ourselves a green source. Ooh, claim. Pretty good. Do we just claim the hardened scales at this point? Because neither of those creatures can attack. 
think we do. And we'll just pass it over. We we should have attacked first, but. And I think I even said that. But this should lock them out of the game pretty well. We should have counted that as well. I'm clicking through things much faster than I should be because I think we have this game on lock. I don't know what else they can do at this point. On our turn, we're going to get the Microsynth Lattice, and I should lock them out of the game. Oh, they can Nature's Claim this turn. If they get Nate, no, that's the only card they have in hand. Okay. So, they can draw a card if they want. And that should be it. Alright, that's our turn. Minus. Let's go get this Michael Synth Lattice. I would love to use this ability. Michael Synth. Tap this. Drop this. They're out of here. Now we just get to do whatever we're going to do at this point. And slowly take them out. All right, did you hit a, I think they had to hit Nature's Claim. <laughs> we got there, folks. <laughs> All right. They should have had 20 cards exiled, and we should have countered that uh, stirrings. But outside of that, we did accomplish our goal. We locked them out. They're done for. <laughs> oh, I love this new card. This hand's not doing much of anything, so we're going to ship that away. And this hand is not doing anything either, so we're doing really well so far. And this hand's got Natural Tron, so we're going to keep this. And let's ship away the Sphere and the Star. We've got a Blast Zone. Get some interaction going. So we're just doing Tron things. Natural Tron into Karn with a Blast Zone to back us up. Looks though we're good against Affinity. All the zero drops. Okay, they get to activate Steel Overseer. Uh, can we afford to wait an extra turn on Karn? Feels like that's asking a lot to wait an extra turn. Okay, so we have we have two options here. We can either run out Blast Zone and then tick it up to two. We're going to be taking eight damage at the very least, but then we get to blow up the Vault Scourge and the Steel Overseer um, next turn, but that stops us from casting the Karn. Or we run out Karn this turn, Exile Steel Overseer. They have to send two, uh, two creatures at Karn and then we only take two. I feel like that's the better line. We're going to take less damage and we remove a threat right now. But it is leaving us with nothing. Because we would love to cast this Karn with Sanctum. Um, allowing for us to do some crazier shenanigans. But we're going to have to go this route. Just It's going to keep us alive a lot longer. And let us get a couple extra turns. We need to draw. So... It was one of the first things that I, I complained about a little bit with Blast Zone because it doesn't come in at zero. Because if it came in on zero, we'd be like wiping most of the board here. They'd have to use their Welding Jar to save one creature, but then we take off the rest. Alright, 
there's an Ulamog. So, let's run out the blast zone. We'll pass it over to them. We'll plan on adding one counter onto blast zone, and that way we can at the very least take out the Vault Scourge and make them waste the Welding Jar on it. Um, if, and that's if we don't just don't hit the necessary Tron lands in order to Ulamog here. Three mana. Okay. Four mana. All right, I can deal with Frenzy, that's fine. So the question is whether or not we want to tick up um, to take out that frenzy at this point, or do we just go for the vault scourge and then they regen it? Hmm. I think we're kind of forced to take out that that frenzy. It's so awkward. If we had a tron land, it just doesn't even matter, right? All right, let, let's let's take up for the frenzy. All right, we we hit the tower anyway. It doesn't matter that much. All right, so we're gonna hmm. Hmm, how awkward is this? So I want to take out the two flyers, and we're leaving them though with three mana and an active frenzy. But I think that's our best bet to keep ourselves alive. Because if we don't take out the two flyers, they can hit us for three in the air and then three in the air again. Um, this way, we're taking out the two the creatures in the air, and then we're leaving them with uh, the ground pounder that we can just block. So, did they blank? I think they blanked. How lucky for us. Whew, and we hit a Karn. We're so good at this game. Alrighty. Hitting him with the Karn right now. About to lock up those welding jars, the opals, and this dark steel. That's what they think in a way. They're not ready for this Michael Synth Lattice. Alright, they're smart. They activated that right away. All right, we're just gonna hold back the... I guess we don't need to. We can just hit them. I was thinking about whether or not we wanted to hold back the Ulamog for one turn, um, but the Karn can take the hit, that's fine. They can just hit it for two and that's it. All right, they're blocking, that's fine too. Because they got a regen shield, but we exile the top 20. They cannot cast anything anymore and they should just be out of this game. Are you attacking? You're not attacking? You're, you're attacking. Okay. Uh, 
Well, I guess we'll just get rid of their dark steel. We don't actually care because we're going to drop another Karn. Keep the new one. Minus the new Karn. Yes. And I want a Crucible. Cast the Crucible. I'm just grabbing that as a, a reassurance here. Um, they're dead in two swings no matter what here. Uh, but for, if for some reason they got rid of our Karn, uh, we can actually Blast Zone, get rid of their Frenzy, but then we can bring back Blast Zone and just always wipe their board depending on what they're at. So, But it, it, like I said, it really shouldn't matter here. Okay, so I am going to get rid of the Ugans and the Worm Coils, bringing in the Warping Whales and the nature's claims. Um, if we're on the play, I will bring in those chalices, um, but right now I'm just gonna leave them out. So on the draw, I don't think we really need them because uh, they're gonna drop all their zero drops, but if we're on the play, I'm willing to risk bringing in both of them so that we can, if we draw it, we can just drop it on turn one for zero. This uh, this Michael Sintelatus business is uh, pretty fun. <laughs> I had to make sure to quickly snag those up. Still behind the bandwagon. I think people double the price of Michael Synth uh, as soon as Karn was spoiled. But I wanted to play test with it first to see if I liked it and how often I was hitting it. And then uh, I was hitting it pretty regularly. So... And I haven't gotten enough testing in to really confirm it because I got another two weeks worth of testing so far but uh, that I can do. But um, I'm leaning towards this deck already pretty heavily. I do want to try out that... Uh, hmm. Well, we're going to keep this. I think this hand's pretty solid. Um, we got two Tron pieces. We got Blast and we got an O-Stone. We want to hit one... Like, if we can hit Tron, we're in a really good spot, obviously. If we get the green source, I'm also okay with that. That stirring should get, uh, do pretty good work for us. Um, I saw a red Eldrazi deck that looked pretty interesting to me. Um, Scape Shift with the Acid Moss. That seems great. I like this kind of uh, affinity hand. If they don't have a payoff in their hand and they're just dropping a bunch of these and then got a bunch of one ones, I'm okay with that. Signal pass, okay. Ballista, that's pretty good. We're just gonna run out this ballista on one and we're just gonna shoot the signal pass. It slows down their clock a ton. And we're going to be able to run out that Blast Zone. And then we're not going to cast anything because I want to tick it up to two. And then we'll take out the Vault Scourges. Okay. Still looks like the play to me. Unless we want to run out the O-Stone. If we run out the O-Stone, we get to wipe three additional things but they're not really that relevant but then we wouldn't lose a land but it's also a turn later yeah hmm i don't really i'm not a fan yeah i think we're just gonna do the blast zone play here i like taking out the two volk scourges a turn earlier and it's a guarantee Green mana is obviously still amazing here. Being able to activate the stirring is going to be huge, or this nature's claim. If we can activate the nature's claim, we can take out that uh, ink moth, and then we really 
have them down to a crawl. Hmm. New Karn, new Karn. New Karn lives and we cast it though, so that's good. Let's run it out there. We'll run out New Karn. We'll just get rid of this land because we want to uptick here. We don't want to downtick because if we downtick, it'll be at three and then they can take it out. Here they can only swing at us for, uh, for four. Unless they have a Gallop Blast? No. And we're good with this. If they want to swing at us instead, uh, we're willing to take out their what they got going on. Because we're going to be able to uh, use Blast Zone next turn, take up both Vault Scourges, and then we, we can just keep upticking the Karn um, pretty well here. We can also minus it, depending on what we're trying to fetch up. Okay, still... Still no green sources. Let's take a look at our side. Um, we could drop a chalice. That wouldn't be bad. We could drop bridge really isn't great here because we just don't have enough. We could get crucible and start triggering blast zones over and over, but that's not that great. We could chalice this turn. Chalice again. Hmm. I think we're good to hold this turn and we're just going to activate the blast zone. So let's just uptick this and let's take out their Mox Opal. And we'll pass it over. And this time we're just going to activate blast zone, take out the Vault Scourges, and then they can do the Ink Moth for the damage. That's fine. Still nothing great. All right, I think here um, we're going to just get the crucible so we can get a land drop. And we'll pass it over. We need two more mana. Karn could go to one here, right? Or we can go to eight infect. Eight infect it is. <sighs> we still don't have... This is really unfortunate. All right, so we can. what we're gonna do now is just go fetch up the Sorcerer Spyglass. Cast that. Mox up on Vault Scourge, sure. Ink Moth Nexus. Um, we're going to pitch an O stone here. Karn's going to die, I would imagine. Uh, 
Uh, they're gonna run up the Vault Scourge as well. Yeah, okay. Thank goodness. Boom, two, Karn. Okay, we can do that. So we'll go map. Tap those two, crack it. Or do we want grain source? No, we want, we want this. Questioning myself for, for a second there. <laughs> All right, so next turn we get to play Michael Synth, and then that should be over because they'll have a 1 1 they can swing with, and we're gonna have an Ulamog that we'll cast. Blast it? No. Okay. I feel like I'm always worried about the Galva Blast. <laughs> I would like to use this ability. I would love to get the Mycosynth Lattice. I would love to cast it. Unless we're not the O Stone as well. And, uh. Pass it to you. I'll take a swing at it. We kill Karn. He's at two now. That's fine. That's unfortunate, but that's fine. So they're not locked away now, but we're going to drop an Ulamog. Makes this a little annoying. Let's go for the things we can't deal with using O Stone. So we'll hit the Ink Moth and the Mountain, right? And then next turn we can O Stone wipe the board and they lose everything. No, I guess we'll just take out the Manlands just in case. This should allow for us to take one hit from them, but it shouldn't be lethal. And then we'll be able to O Stone wipe the board and they'll be left with a single mountain. Sphere, that's fine because we already have the mana necessary to activate O Stone. Does the opponent want to sack everything out to the Vault Scourge to give them a theoretical two turn to lock? I think that's what they're trying to decide right now is if they want to sack everything onto their uh, Vault Scourge other than the Vault Scourge, the Damping Sphere, and then their two lands. 
and then that way they would be putting us on just a two turn clock and they could uh see if that's good enough because our blast zone can't have any counters added onto but like they should i mean they could see the o stone like that plan's not gonna work <laughs> Okay, so because we want to make sure we can exile 20 cards, we're just going to go ahead and pop our O-Stone. Oh, I should have tapped differently so I could have kept the mana up for the Warping Wheel. They're down to just one red source anyway, but, you know, it's still the correct one. <gasps> we finally hit a green source. I don't even want to use it. I want to. I want to blow something of theirs up if they get any artifacts. I want to hit it with the nature's claim. Alrighty took down that opponent pretty sweet so what do you guys think so far do you guys like this deck <laughs> do you do you think karn is a worthwhile addition to the tron deck And that's okay. You're here, Zog. That's what matters. That's what matters. What do you think so far? Are you liking uh, what we're doing here with Karn? Is it worthwhile? I know you're already going to be doing it with your... Uh, um, in your EDH, right? Your Karn EDH is going to be a, a lot of fun. It definitely seems rude, but we're playing Tron. We're inherently rude already. Uh, this hand's sweet. We'll keep this. We're going to be able to uh, form Tron, and then we can uh, sphere for stirrings and see if we can find relevant threats, and then we can o stone wipe the board if we need it. Uh, yeah, you know, I think it does take Tron to a new level of rude. Though, so I will give you that. Because now instead of exile land, exile land, we're like, you just don't have lands. They're all just there, do nothings. Alright, looks like we're going against Storm. This might be rough. Because uh, we're going to tap out here. And go get this power pant and uh, pass it back to them and see if we lose the game. I'm expecting to lose here, folks. I'm expecting to lose. <gasps> what? This feels suspect. This feels real suspect. Oh my gosh. Are they going to let us untap and carn them? They're going to hold them with blue for remand, right? Like, that's reasonable. 
Like, this card's gonna get remanded so hard. Yeah. <sighs> Opponent was rude. I mean, we were trying to exile their stuff, so it's understandable, but still. All right, they're going to five cards. I'm expecting death. Oh my gosh, we're still alive. <laughs> okay, and now are they just killing us? Oh, Electromancer? Gifts ungiven. So, like, with this, no matter what we do, we lose, right? Because they're going to give us the two rituals and Manamorphos and it gifts, I mean, uh, Past in Flames. And because of the double mana reduction. No. Yeah, because of the double mana reduction, if we give them Manamorphos and Past in Flames, um, they can still go add two mana. And then this will only cost them two mana, but do they have the other ritual in hand? Okay, they had another ritual. And we're uh, we're dead here, folks. No need to waste their time. All right, we're going to bring in the two Warping Whales, and we're going to take out the... Hmm. Karn can fetch up Trinisphere, Chalice. Still really relevant stuff. So, yeah, let's let's take out the, uh, the two Warm Coils. So, um... This is one of the things that I actually adjust for in the new version that I'm going to try out after this league. We play around with some of the, the, the hits in the deck so that way we can adjust for it appropriately and then that way we still get some more graveyard interaction. So, But I was still pretty impressed with this list. Um, there were some things that were in the side that I did uh, cut uh, from the get-go when my friend shipped me this list. Um, did not have the worm coil on the side. I did want to put a worm coil on the side because I wanted to be able to fetch that up. Um, they, they were on one chalice. I did go to two. Um, I did try out a torpor orb. Was not impressed with that card in the side because um, we weren't hitting it until turn three sometimes. And just like it's a turn slower than where we would want to be if you have it. So that way you can impact them quite a bit. Um, and then, I don't know, everything else seemed pretty solid. Trinisphere is pretty sweet. And that was the other, that's one card that I was considering that it's not good enough, but I think it is. This is all non-land, so we're going to go ahead and ship that. And uh, this, hand's, this hand's not doing much, but it's it can form Tron we can find something, I suppose. So let's actually ship the Sanctum because there is the chance that we walk ourselves into an Ulamog. Oh, uh, we have one Graft Diggers. We have one Graft Diggers, so... In the side here. Uh, we have no Relics, and that's another adjustment that I pl uh, play for, so... And you should be able to pull up the deck list on the right side of the stream there. Hitting that Sphere is pretty sweet. We can Stirrings now. Alright, we can form Tron... So part one is done. We actually have the mana to Ulamog as well, so that's pretty sweet. So we'll also run out the O Stone and then see if that's good enough to hold them off. But if they drop a Lord here, okay, they're not brave enough to drop the Lord. Yeah, I'm treating um, Karn almost like one of the wish cards. Um, 
Oh, okay. Uh, let me get the list for you. Just posted that there for you. So that's the this is the version that we're on right now. We might just be dead here. No problem. Let me know what you think about the deck. That's a, okay. We have two more draws, three more draws. So far, this is this will be the fourth league I've run with this deck, and I'm still really enjoying it. Need to crack that 5-0, though. So let's see if we can make that happen on stream tonight. And realistically, we're we're done here, but uh, with this matchup, but they see if there's the smallest chance they fizzle. It's pretty hard for them to fizzle right now. Especially if they're casting all the rituals again. They got a pieces of the puzzle and there was a gifts ungiven in that pile. So that's it for us. Unfortunate. This this version, because we cut those relics out of the main, makes this matchup much harder. And because we're, we're leaning on uh, being able to use the toolboxing with Kar and we actually don't have as much interaction with them either. So that's a bit of a bummer. Um, this hand's not bad. We're going to get turn four, Tron. And I think that's just fine. And we got a blast zone for a bit of interaction, so and we're on the play too, so that's pretty sweet. Basic force into a stirrings. What do we got here? Dark steel. So this is probably hard in infinity. All right, we'll ship that on back next turn. We'll be able to scribe for the tower. Overseer is pretty good for them, right? They're happy about that. Welding jar. All right, let's start thinking about what we want to grab here. And depending if we can empty our hand fast enough, um, the Ensnaring Bridge is going to be sweet. Um, can we afford to have Karn go down to three immediately is the question. And I'm not sure if we will. Because they're going to pump their team. and Oh my gosh. Uh, 
We can't drop our hand that fast. But they don't have any flyers right now. So as much as I want to Karn them and lock them, let's have them walk themselves out of this game by pumping up with their Steel Overseer too much. So what we're going to do is run out this Worm Coil. And then we're going to run out the map and we're just going to pass. And so I'm expecting them to activate their Steel Overseer again. And then their car, their creatures are going to be just too large. And we'll be able to car and get ensnaring bridge. And they're not going to be able to swing anymore. And we're one mana short of doing the lock two. So we'll probably just do it over two turns. And it's safer anyway, because we'll be able to protect our Karn that way. Outside of a Ballista. If they get a Ballista... Oh, wait, no. Ballista doesn't do it either, because they can't shoot us. So don't. I don't think they have much. is thinking and more thinking. I'm willing to block this if that's what they're trying to do. Are they going to add counters to it and then regenerate it? Because I'm absolutely fine with that. Okay, they're just going to go for the block and add the counters to something else. Interesting. I thought they may have gone for the uh, welding jar onto it. But uh, that's fine too. You got one massive arcbound worker. And we're one mana short of that as well. Hmm. Okay. Well... We're fine with that. What we're going to do is just run out the Karn. See if they want to respond. This will lock them down to one mana too, which is pretty sweet. Let's go fetch up some goodness. Let's go get this ensnaring bridge. And then we're just going to plan on using Expedition Map to go fetch up a Sanctum. And then we'll cast Ulamog next turn to wipe out the relevant things. And chaining it into another Ulamog. Okay, they're going to concede. How? Baller. Alright. Nature's Claims. Warping Whales. Take out the Ugans. Worm coils. Play, playing a lot of uh, hardened affinity today, apparently. So, anybody have any uh, thoughts on the uh, Mythic Championship, the London, and all that stuff, how it played out, and? What do you guys think of the meta? I was kind of surprised by just how many uh, Tron decks there were, but Tron does seem to take advantage of the London Mulligan more so than other decks, which is uh, a strong reason why you should do it. So,
and of course that uh that Watanabe disaster. Thanks, Phoenix, for sending that rating party. I was surprised by uh, the lack of dredge. <laughs> uh, what was the uh, amount of top eight that had dredge in it? All right, this hand's got Tron, and we're going to be able to fetch it up. fetch up uh, a relevant answer here with stirring so that's gonna be pretty sweet and that top eight was supposed to have one more Tron player right so we actually wouldn't have even seen affinity crack it um, until that uh, whole issue popped up so um, and then I just saw that they, they posted the 24 uh, anyone that had 24 points or higher as well. I haven't got a chance to parse through that list, but uh, seems like a good data to pull from. And I did want to run out that map so that they could hit it with an ancient time because next time we can just activate the sphere and then run into an ancient stirrings. We've got Tron without issue, so see if this plays out the way we want it to. All right, Karn the Great Creator is fantastic, of course. So let's just ship this over. Next turn, we're gonna plan on just Ballista, and we can shoot down their stuff if we need to and then the following turn we can carn and lattice them we might want to o stone first um just to wipe the board but uh either way i'm feeling pretty confident here they don't they don't have that fast of a start and we've got a lot of great cards in our hand i feel like dredge has been getting hated on pretty hard i want to really try that uh that Titan shift with the Acid Moss. They also saw that they played a Dragon Lord in the side, which seems fun. Uh, I might play that with my Breachless version as well. I can, I, you know, I can just bring that in really easy and then breach it out, wipe the opponent's board, and then hit them for eight. I think we just want a ballista here for three. And we're just gonna be basically using it as a sacrificial play. You can shoot it for one now. And then when we shoot it again, they can activate Welding Jar and we'll shoot in response. And then they just have an Arcbound Ravager with three counters on it. Oh, they didn't even sack it. It's interesting. They have an Archbound Ranger with two counters on it. Very true. Very true. There is a lot of Tron that's just main decking those relics, and it's usually anywhere from like a two to three of. I don't think anybody went up to four of. Okay, we can O Stone here, wipe the board. And they can create themselves a couple of 1-1s. One Lattice. 
doesn't seem that great because if we go for the lattice play they just kill our Karn. So let's go for the O-Stone play. And when we do this, they can uh, they can make one big hanger back, right? If they want one big token, but um, it should be pretty much over for them at this point. Even uh, even Titan Shift was on the three relics in the main. All right, they got five one ones. Coil would let us race against them pretty well, and then Karn would die. Chalice doesn't seem that relevant. In Snaring Bridge, we have too many cards right now. Um, so it's kind of rough if we want to do that. If we we can just Karn an uptick, keep it around another turn, and then minus, but then we can only be, it would be at a one, so then we wouldn't be able to minus that well. We'd have to up it again. Um, hey, Aqua Ninja. Thanks for the follow, man. So I'm thinking Warm Coil seems like a pretty solid bet here for us. So yeah, we're going to do that. our Karn here but as long as they don't get anything too crazy we should win the race here with uh, Worm Coil pretty easily yes I agree absolutely that's actually what I do with the uh, new version that I moved to I uh, those a lot of those key cards that a lot of times we want to fetch up um, the Ballista the O Stone the Worm Coil I actually move one of each of those into the cyborg so then Karn can act as the um, fourth fifth sixth and seventh copy of all of those cards or the if it's Ballista the second third fourth and fifth copy of it rather than just having them stuck in our deck um, so after playing it, uh, this version with Worm Coil on the side, and I was fetching that up a good bit, I was like, I actually want to have everything that is fetchable from my deck that's relevant in the sideboard so we can pull it out. So in the version 1.1, that's what we're going to play around with and see if that's good enough to really push this deck over the uh, edge again. And it allows for me to fit those relics into the main. That's one card I didn't want to see because they can block and sack now, which makes things awkward. But we can get rid of it with... Um, Blast zone. So we could fetch that up. All right, 
it didn't hit anything relevant. Let's start off with a swing. They'll block and sack. And that's fine. Still takes one of the creatures off the board. this map go fetch ourselves up a blast zone we'll run that out there and we'll pass it over so here we're just gonna plan on taking a big hit and then we'll add a blast zone add one counter on it and then we can take out the arc bomb There's Karns, that's pretty good. So, let's, let's get rid of Arcbound first. See, we can go Karn, fetch up Crucible, cast Crucible, but we wouldn't be able to activate Crucible this turn, which is unfortunate. But it would let us get into the fun lock for a very long time. But let's start things off with just swinging. If they block and move the counter over to the Thopter, that's already large. Karn would, Karn would still take three. You need to stop drawing lands. I need can't get rid of them fast enough. All right, they're gonna nature's claim. We could go fetch up another Worm Coil. That's not unreasonable, but we're gonna be giving up our Karn for sure. And then swinging with all those creatures. Mm -mm -mm. I think that's where we wanna be.
Too bad we weren't in a better position. We could just get Trinisphere and they can never cast anything again. <laughs> Until they hit another land. Hey, Battler. Thanks so much for the follow. <laughs> Our opponent's saying, nice to play bridge with Tron. Next time they suggest Blood Moon. Actually, I wanted to try Damping Sphere in our side. I want to be that savage. Because if, we, if we're going to the mirror match and we had one Damping Spear on our side and we cast Karn, we would be able to minus it, go get Damping Spear and drop it. And then we're both both players would be stuck at three lands, but we would have a Karn in play that we can go fetch up and go get Crucible and then go for the Ghost Quarter lock. Um, or if we think we can just get to six mana faster and go for the Microsynth lock. So there's some options there. I mean, how unreasonable is it? <laughs> I'm a caveman, confirmed. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Alright, we're still not hitting anything but lands here. So we're just gonna swing, try to gain some life. And we're going to be outracing them by a good margin here. We might see them hold back this Thopter just to block our Life Linker, our Death Toucher. If they do hold it back, we'll swing with just the Death Toucher, not the Life Linker. Alright, they've got their Damping Sphere. And that's fine, we've tapped a, we've done all the mana things we need at this point. Interesting. And there's Karn and mana. I mean, there's Karn and we already have the mana. Let's see if they block with both. Go to the main and let's be savage. We're gonna drop this Karn. I'd like to sacrifice that. Let's get this walking ballista. And let's exile that to big uh, Thopter. You want us to splash blue and play spark double? Okay, if we're splashing blue, I'll be honest with you, we're gonna go for the blue-green Tron deck that uh, Andrew and I have been kicking around with Noah for quite some time here. Three one, folks, let's see if we can end this with the four one. Because there's a version we're playing around with that we get to just, uh, we get to just do all the fun cantrips and uh, kind of just merge the two versions. This has no lands, we're shipping this. This has two lands. 
three lands. Two of them are Tron pieces. I think we can keep this. Fulfill some of my rules, and we'll ship back a worm coil. All right, let's see. Uh, see how good we are playing Tron here. See if the luck holds. Affinity again. Oh my gosh. Hitting the sphere over the uh, the land. I mean the creature we hit. Yeah, I liked hitting the creature there because uh, they were going to be left with just four creatures and our Ballista was going to be a 4-4 next turn if we needed to cast it. So we can wipe their board in this swing for lethal um, if we needed to. But uh, they're also in a pretty bad spot with life total anyway. So, um, yeah, I think blue-green would be pretty sweet. And, yeah, this little card is doing work. Mm, we, need to hit, um, we need to hit the Tron piece right now. <laughs> Mm-mm. That's no good. That is no good. Can we stay alive here? Can I hit? This is like a stretch of a play. I don't think it's even going to do anything. I'm trying to think if we tap a power plant, sacrifice ghost quarter, hit our power plant, um, get a green source, stirrings, Hit the relevant Tron piece, then next turn Sylvan Scrying for the Tron piece, and then see if that is enough to get us the game. It requires us to hit the uh, one of the pieces right now. And then we play it. We'll pass turn, and then next turn we will um, Sylvan Scrying, get mine. And then that will allow us to be able to hold up the O stone mana. Oh, they just have Gal Blast. It doesn't matter. Boom, boom. Get rid of these. And bring this in. Yes, because either way, Karn would die. And, and with Ballista and Tron active, you can shoot everything. That's a fair point. That's a very fair point. Because then we would just have an insane amount of mana. And then just by untapping, they, they would just be dead. This hand is too slow, and we can work with this hand. Because we were at such a high left total, I guess it didn't matter, right? So you're, that's a really good point, that we would have just been able to not only unlock ourselves from the damping sphere, we would have been able to just have a lethal board and a lethal ballista from just casting it, too. So... All right, we got one interaction spell before, like, turn four or five uh, for Ulama. Realistically, this is probably a turn five hand that we would get him if we're lucky. We would enjoy hitting a payoff here.
that is a pretty good payoff. Let's get a mine and we'll pass it over. Damping sphere. Okay. Little does our opponent know we're sitting on this nature's claim, so it's not even an issue. I wonder if they're trying to cast a two drop under their own damping sphere right now. Because I think they might have been. Scourge. Sure. Alrighty, let's O Stone and wipe the board. Oh, you got a kitten named a Johnny? That is awesome. What kind of kitten did you get? And I feel like that's a like a great name because of like anyone that's in the magic community sees it, they're like, boom, they, they they're gonna love it. But if anyone that's not in the magic community sees it and sees that name, they're just gonna enjoy it anyway. Okay, this hand can work. It's a little awkward because we have two Tron pieces and mm, I want to keep the Karn, I want to keep the Tron pieces. We have to either ship away one of the stars or we have to ship away one of the stirrings here. And I think the guaranteed cantrip is more relevant than getting blown out, but I think I'm willing to risk it. So let's let's ship the sphere. Just pulled up a picture of a Maine Coon and I think that's a fantastic name for that cat if it looks like any of those pictures I'm seeing. All right, we've got the natural Tron anyway now because we're great. So let's just drop a star, we'll pass it over. All right, Thoughtseize is a bit rough. They'll probably take that Karn, but we've got two stirrings. They may not even care about that Karn, but... Nope, they do. Opponent's rude. Alright, they're down to no cards in hand, though, so that's pretty solid for us. Oh, and we hit a claim? That's pretty sweet. Let's see if we can just... We might just want to get a green source here. I think that's our best bet, because then it unlocks the rest of our hand. So we'll pass that over. We have Tron if we draw something relevant. If not, we can just run out the force and we can claim if they drop a payoff spell here. If not, we're just gonna stirrings and just uh, assemble from there. And they just had to land, so they're on a pretty slow clock. All right, O-Stone Sweet leaves them with just the just the dark steel. Ulamog should end the game though, so let's grab Ulamog. And we'll pass it over. Thanks for the subscribe, Milk Crate. I mean, I have to subscribe to follow. Oh, and we just top deck uh, a no stone anyway, so we'll play that out. Thank you. 
Um, they're not worthless. And if you have certain ones, they actually go for a little bit. Woo! Ending that 4-1. That's pretty sweet. So that's kind of like what I got yesterday. I, I like I was able to lock my opponents out of games. Um, f was able to fetch up a, a lot of relevant things. So we're going to stop the recording here for 